Hello, Sovereign, my Hi. love. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to Seven Minutes in Heaven. Are we really going to get all the way to heaven? I hope Is so. Is it really that close? <laughs> <laughs> you are my favorite. You always have the best things to say about <laughs> pornography and sex and humans in general. Thank you. <laughs> what have you been up to? I got a blog, SovereignSireOnline.com, mm -hmm. that, um, I'm gonna be starting to post stuff like, I guess I would call it like long form journalism about my sex life, but like- I like that. I get a lot of questions about like how my life is different. Um, yeah. When I date guys, a lot of them like they have weird questions. And so I, I was like, oh, I wanna start like writing about this in this way that to kind of not, to sort of demystify it a little bit, mm -hmm. but also just, I realized like, oh, people are very curious about how do you, how do you manage your emotional life when you kind of take sex out of it. Yeah. You know, because we all have sex all the time, so that no longer becomes like a, a marker of significance in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of people, like you see how hard it is for people to navigate that in their, when they're not in porn. Mm -hmm. And so when they see people in porn, they're just like, I don't. Yeah, just brainstorm. Yeah, they're just like, what, yeah. I don't even. <laughs> My interests had become really specific okay. in terms of like what I wanted to write about and kind of what I wanted to be working on in terms of like the sex aspect of the erotica, all that kind of stuff. So I got really interested in doing my crazy sex life.com, like doing the sex tape thing and the show me your O face. And like, I, I don't know, like kind a of trailer for that. And it was so cool. <laughs> I got really excited <laughs> because it's just like so real. Well, that's, and I, I think that's like, um, for me, I feel like there's a, obviously there's a lot of POV stuff, there's a lot of reality-based stuff, and I felt like um, I there what was missing was like POV done by a girl with other girls. I felt like maybe I could get something more out of people because like we're friends, I'm not a yeah. director. It kind of was the thing that I loved about Belladonna stuff, and so it was kind of like, I just felt like I wanted to have a, a stab at it, I guess, like kind of creating that same sort of really um, like sex positive and especially like just feminist, like female positive focused um, stuff. And all the guys I've talked to like are really into it and mm. have all been like, everyone says that men want to be violent to women and the pornography encourages all this kind of stuff. And what I found is that the stuff that sells the most in my store is like kissing and show me your own face. I'm just very excited to see where they go. Yeah. You know, like, because when I started the clip store, I had no idea, like, what would be intriguing to people or what would be intriguing to me. Yeah, what you actually want to shoot yeah. day in and day out. Yeah, and the minute I got the camera in my hand, it was like I knew what I was going to do. Yeah. So even when I was, like, shooting, Dana Jarvan was, like, my first um, shoot. And, and uh, I even then, I just knew, I was like, I know exactly what this is going to be. It's just going to be, like showcasing these amazing creatures that I work with and like <laughs> doing their thing in their native habitat, you know, <laughs> like kind of, um, but definitely interested in showing these girls as like full people, fully yeah. rounded people. And not that I'm the first person to do that, but I feel like sometimes since Belladonna, I don't think anyone that's like an active performer has mm -hmm. been really doing that. I think that's what made her so special. Mm -hmm. Um, and why people loved her so much was because you know, she was she was so still an active performer, so there was like a heart and a soul there and like what yeah. she was trying to get out of other performers. At yeah. least for me, it's like I just loved watching her stuff because it was just so authentic and like like embracing and inclusive. Mm -hmm. And you really felt like, you know, this was someone that like loved sex and women and, and you know, and having this journey. Yeah. And so that's kind of for me it's the same thing. It's like this like like I love all of my friends and like I want to show them like as the way I see them, you know, I don't know. That's so cool. Speaking of really cool feminist women, Dana Vespoli, I have such a like tender spot in my heart for her. Oh, me too. We're like sisters. She's like, she's like big mama bear sister. Like I, I met her the, I think it was like the third shoot I had done. Oh. As soon as she showed up, she like walked in and like I stood up and she like just tried to like grab me and carry me by my ass. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, can I shoot you for lesbian ass worship? And I was like, I'm oh. a contract girl, I can't do it. But 
um, we just became like best friends like right away. She's kind of been this guiding angel sort of in the back of my career, just kind of do this, don't do that. If you like, just very, um, like very gently kind of mentoring me through. That's really useful to have because it's like if you don't have someone sort of looking up for you in that kind of way, it's a really tough business to get into. Oh, and it's yeah. a tough business to stay in. It's like joining the NFL. I've, I like, I feel like half the battle in having a career is just staying in. I feel like most performers probably stay in for like nine months. Yeah. So when you get the people that are around for years, like Chanel Preston, Dana Vespoli, like Dana DeArmond. Right. It's, Dana's like a unicorn. Like her, <laughs> I know. her career is incredible. It's like, insane. It like inspires me. It's ins it is inspiring. When you do a scene with her, she's just like a fucking animal and people like it and that's her. And it's oh no, really she's cool. She's my favorite performer to work with because the pacing is like it was like her, Asa, Kira, and Danny Daniels too. The, the pacing and the ability to just, to like give, I would compare it to like Manuel or Eric Everhard. Yeah. Like in terms of their ability to just kind of like create like this authentic chemistry. James Dean too. I thought like the, the Dean versus D. Armand was, I was like, no, that they're perfectly yeah. like, <laughs> they're the same performer. Yeah, like, they, they really are. are. They so are. I thought that was like so fitting. Yeah, like, that was cool. You know what I was really obsessed with was fluid. Yeah, she's doing a third one. She just did a second one. She's doing a third one. I'm gonna be in it. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be so so dope. Oh. <laughs> like, I already know it's like oh, kind of no. the cool thing about being Dana's friend is like <laughs> I know everything she's doing and it's like so exciting to me because I'm yeah. like yeah. I'm just like really 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 obsessed with like water play sort of stuff yeah. anyway. So when I saw fluid one, I was fluid one, it was just called fluid. I was like, yes. And then I saw fluid two and I was like, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> fluid three is coming. <laughs> I think we're shooting it in December and yeah. So it would be like a February release. That's so, so I think it just exciting. in time for Valentine's day. Yay. Yay. Buy it for your sweetheart. Exactly. <laughs> Well, I'm excited. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Thank you for having me. Uh -huh. I'll have you later. <laughs> <laughs>